Welcome back to the Home Lab on what is a really special day for me in the channel. The FJ's Physics playlist is 200 today. So thank you so much for supporting my channel, leaving some fantastic comments and subscribing and watching some of the previous 199 FJ's Physics playlist videos. Well, as a bit of a celebration and something special for you for supporting me, I'm going to show you something really unusual today. What we're going to look at is the gallium gun, the ultimate murder weapon. But just before we start, a little bit of a disclaimer. I've got no intention of showing you something really dangerous or glorifying such matters. I'm sure that would get me taken down from YouTube straight away. But this is a very special demonstration and a crime story, I think, that's too good to miss. Gallium metal was discovered by a French chemist in 1875, and he named it gallium, from the Latin for France, gallia. It's at position 31 on the periodic table, making it similar in properties to aluminium and thallium, and with a relative atomic mass of 69.7, more than half its mass is made up of neutrons. But it also has a rather unusual melting point, and more of this later. Its uses are mainly electrical, such as LEDs, solar panels and displays, and various semiconductors, as well as alloying with plutonium to make the cores or pits of some fission-based nuclear weapons. So, in our crime scene today, our murder weapon is going to be made out of gallium metal. So, we're going to need to make a mould, melt down some gallium metal, cast it in the shape of a gun, fake one of course, and then commit the crime. So, with this in mind, I bought a small plastic model of a suitable weapon, a Hecklin Cock HK-53 assault rifle, to use as a pattern in the mould. Using a little bit of physics, I found the mass of the plastic gun was 8.7 grams, and having a density of about 8.95 grams per centimetre cubed, it's therefore made of about 9 centimetres cubed of plastic, which means we'll therefore need 9 centimetres cubed of gallium metal, which, knowing its density, about 6 grams per centimetre cubed, is 53 grams of pure gallium metal. I built the mould out of DAS modelling clay, and with this completed, and a little bit of olive oil as a release agent, it was time to pour in some molten gallium metal. This ended in disaster, as I managed to spray it all over my lab, through my own complete stupidity, showing just how unsuited I am to this type of murderous activity. But after a few hours clean-up and collection of all of the gallium metal that had been spread far and wide, it was time to attempt the process a second time, and this time it was successful. I then put the whole thing in a sealed container to keep the clay a little bit moist to make it easier to carve out the finished gun and placed it in a cool place to let it solidify. Once solidified fully, it was time to dig out the gun from the clay mould and prepare for the murderous deed. What happened next need not be recounted, but with the deed done, it was time to dispatch the evidence and leave no trace of what evil deed had passed. And here is where things get interesting. With the deed done, there was still time enough to marvel at one's work, with the weapon lying closely in my now warm hand, one that only minutes before was committing an unspeakable crime. It didn't take long, but within minutes, the gun had gone, melted back to its elemental metal with no trace of its previous dastardly use. And there ends the story of the gallium gun, an elemental metal with a melting point lower than that of human skin. 
So, I hope you enjoyed today's crime story, The Gallium Gun. If it interested you, perhaps have a look at The Disappearing Teaspoon, another interesting experiment that's been done for, I guess, nearly 100 years with gallium. Anyway, thanks ever so much for supporting my channel and making FJ's Physics Playlist 200 today. I have really enjoyed making the videos and sharing some of the lovely things that I've been able to see in my physics career. My next video is going to be a short one on harvesting lithium ion batteries for some of the projects that you might be doing, so I hope that'll interest you. But as ever, I'll be making lots of videos hopefully this year, and do please join me then.